If you've ever been curious about how far you can see a light out on the ocean, well, the answer really depends on three things. The first thing that it depends on is the visibility. If it's foggy or snowy or rainy, you can't see a light as far as you could as if it was clear weather. The second thing that it depends on is actually the power of the light. Some lights are very powerful, some lights are weak. In the maritime world, this is known as nominal range, and you can look this information up in a government publication. When you combine the power of the light, or the nominal range, with the actual visibility of the atmosphere, you get a third data point, which is known as luminous range. This is how far the light can actually be seen in the prevailing conditions. The third and final thing that the visibility of the light depends on, and this assumes that the Earth is round and not flat, is the geographic range of the light. In fact, it depends on the height of the light and the height of the observer to determine the geographic range of the light. For example, a taller light can be seen further than a vertically challenged light. And likewise, you can see further if you go higher up on your vessel. Ultimately, the light can be seen at the lesser of these two distances. Either you're limited by the geographic range and the curvature of the Earth, or you're limited by the power of the light and the atmospheric visibility, or the luminous range. So it comes down to a competition between the luminous range and the geographic range. Why does this matter? Well, if you're out there at sea and you expect to see a light, you've done some calculations and you don't, well, that gives you some information. Maybe the atmosphere is a little bit less visible than you thought, or maybe you're in a different position than you thought. Likewise, if you thought that you could see a light at a certain time and it shows up earlier than planned, well, maybe you're actually closer to shoal water than you thought, so you should check your position. If you're interested in more of an academic understanding of how this all applies in the maritime world, well, let's take a look at where to find this information and do a few practice problems. Generally, I like to start with the geographic range of the light, which depends on the height of the observer and the height of the light. And it can be determined using this formula. The distance of the geographic range is the 1.17 times the square root of the height of the observer in feet, plus 1.17 times the square root of the height of the light in feet as well. But fear not, you don't need to use the formula every time. Most government publications will give you a table of where to find the geographic range. In the United States, it's located in the light list or in Bowditch. It's also important to note that the geographic range is not simply the distance to horizon table because it depends on both the observer and the light. As an example, what is the geographic range of a light that is 65 feet tall? Well, according to the table, it can be seen 9.4 nautical miles away. What about a light that's 105 feet tall? In the Bowditch tables, the value is given as 12 nautical miles. But in the light list, you have to interpolate or use ratios to pick an answer between the two tabulated values, but you still get the same answer. Finally, if you don't know the height of the light, you can also look it up in the light list or other government publication. For example, the height of Montauk light in New York is listed as 168 feet. So you can use this information to go into the table and look up the geographic range for that. And don't forget to add your own height to obtain the total geographic range. It's not just the height of the light, it's also the height of the observer to determine the geographic range of the system. Once you've solved the geographic range calculation based on the curvature of the Earth and the height of the light and the observer, you can move on to the luminous range calculation. Luminous range is defined as the greatest distance that a light can be seen in the prevailing atmospheric conditions. And we have to go back into the government publication, the light list in the United States, and get the nominal range of the light. The nominal range is the power of the light, how far it can be seen in average conditions. And by the way, average conditions is defined as 10 miles of visibility. So for example, the nominal range of Montauk light is listed as 24 nautical miles. But wait a minute, if the nominal range is how far you can see a light in average conditions, and average conditions is defined as 10 miles, how can we see this light at 24? Well, the answer is it's wicked powerful. So it depends on the power of the light. Once you have the nominal range of the light, we take a look at the luminous range diagram. Each country's government publication might have its own version, but here is one for the USA. This diagram has nominal range along the bottom and visibility in the interior. Visibility can be obtained from the weather radio or estimated by you, and there's meteorological codes or nautical miles listed here. Remember that all ranges are approximate according to the diagram. 
Enter the diagram at the bottom using the nominal range. From there, scroll up until you cross with the visibility of the atmosphere, either given in code or in nautical miles. And then the luminous range is given on the left. As an example, if you had a nominal range of 10 nautical miles and the atmospheric visibility was say 5.5 nautical miles, what is the luminous range of the light? Well, we start at the nominal range of 10, we scroll up to the visibility of 5.5 curve, and then we go straight over to the left to get the luminous range, somewhere around seven nautical miles. So bottom line, how far can you see a light at sea? Well, first things first, calculate the geographic range of the system, depending on your height and the height of the light. Then you've got the geographic range. Next, you're gonna calculate the luminous range of the light. The luminous range being how far you can see it in the actual conditions of the atmosphere. To get that, you need the power of the light, or the nominal range, and the existing meteorological visibility. You use the luminous range diagram to determine the luminous range. Ultimately, whichever is lesser, the geographic range or the luminous range, whichever is less, is going to be your answer because you're limited by one of those two values. So if you're using this for your own knowledge at sea, hopefully that is helpful. Uh, if you're studying for an exam, I've included a few links below that might be helpful as you prepare for your tests. Sail safe and don't forget to watch out for the edge of the earth.